Welcome to Two Cents, where I, Xavier Valsa, speak to industry professionals to give us their two cents of how they got to where they are today. Today's guest is Daniel Moyley. Daniel is one of the most hyped photographers at the moment. He works on an ultra-large format. He's a good friend. Daniel, welcome. Thank you, Xavier, for having me here. It's a real pleasure. Tell us your story. Where do you come from? <laughs> I'm from the Engadine Valley. And I always was in love with visual projects. And for years, I worked with my friends on snowboard and ski movies. And it was a great time. And then I started to do more animations and commercial graphic design jobs. But I, I really was sick for, for working on a computer. My biggest dream was always to work with natural light and do one by one exposures. Many years ago I started with small tiny pinhole projects and the camera gets the cameras get always bigger and then at the moment I had the financial background to to pull a project like this and we did it and I'm so thankful that we did it. Um, so that means it's expensive to do this? One part are the materials and the lens and the trailer and all this and the second part is the, the time that you invest to figure out how it works because if if you have nobody to ask how it works, normally you are on the right way. I and mean, why would you say that large format or ultra large format is better than a 35 millimeter format? What, what happens in the process? Yeah, the question is always, what's a large format for you? My negative is 120 by one meter with the same resolution that a 35 millimeters negative has. And that's why it looks different. You have this huge piece with so much information on it. I think that's the, that's the difference. Your camera is massive. And when you see something, when you envision it, how do you actually place your camera? How do you shift it around so that you can get to the right um, composition that you have in mind? I don't would say that's a problem, but the biggest cha challenge is to really find locations that really works. Because I don't have, I can zoom. I cannot work like a normal photographer. I have to take the things like they are. I cannot move my my thing one meter to the next side or uh, there. It's like it is. And that's a difficult part to find location, to find objects that really works. So you, you have this very specific way of framing, yeah, where your 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 composition is is absolutely calculated. Uh, how do you decide what is that composition? If you have one chance to do one photo, you better think about it. And yeah, we think a lot of our framings and we don't do things by the way. I think that's the point. If you have one chance to do one photo a day, you think what you're doing. You don't even have color in your pictures to help you to tell the story, but still somehow you manage to take us on this crazy ride of nothingness in a way. How do you do that? I love to reduce. I love to reduce a landscape to the minimum that's still a landscape. Two years ago, we started this project Shades of White. 
and the goal was to reduce a landscape to a surface of snow. Snow is not just white, snow is snow lifts. If you don't have any comparison of size and what it is, could be sand, could be snow, is it small, is it big, there something weird happens. You remove all the information that normally a, a landscape or a picture brings with it, but you have still all these stories, all this information this in this wide surface. Normally you get distracted by colors. You have a red house in the picture and you are always focus on this red red house and you lose the the sense of proportions and textures and what happens in the picture and that's why i think it's really difficult to take a black and white picture that really looks good and that's what I'm searching for. We all need inspiration for our work. Where do you go to to get some inspiration? Who do you look up to? I think the best inspiration is always to walk around with open eyes. And sometimes I, I can find things that I saw for many, for many years but never recognized that they are beautiful. And now with this, with this project, I start to look closer and look better at the things surrounding at my home. So you reckon the inspiration is all around us? Yeah, definitely. I would define you as being uh, successful in what you're doing. Um, how would you, def how would you uh, inspire somebody else, a young person, somebody that would like, that's striving to also be a good photographer? What would your steps to success be? I think the, the biggest part is to try to think outside the box. If you don't have person to ask how it works, normally you are on the right way to do something cool that really works. But it's mostly the hardest way. What drives you? What, what gets you up in the morning to, to say, okay, if today I'm going to look for the next, the next cool idea or the next cool shot or the next good composition? That's my daily job at the end. If I'm getting up, my motivation is to try to do with nothing something to take dirty snow, make a snowball out of it, do a story about the snowballs, about this pollution in the mountains and try to create a story out of, out of mostly nothing that keeps me alive every day. And I'm so thankful I have you. I have Oliver, I have all my friends, Jan and Rie, that they are really inspiring and we are a good crew and with my technique I have so much fun and yeah, it's just beautiful to work with a tech, technique like this. Hey Daniel, cheers man. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Xaver. It was a real pleasure and I hope to see you soon again in the mountains. That's it for now. Join us next time on Two Cents, stories from industry professionals. Use it or lose it. You choose. <laughs>